Okay, uh, so the overview of network uh, networks and devices. So for most of you guys, this is going to be a review lecture. You guys already probably know what hubs and switches and routers are from your other classes. Um, but again, we're going to go through it just to make sure there's nothing that you're missing. So what do you guys think of when you think of a computer network? Okay, so using a lot of different devices that can seamlessly talk to each other, right? Um, yeah, so when we talk about computer networks, you guys are probably pretty familiar uh, with that from your Cisco classes. Um, do you guys think it's just limited to computers? No? Lots of no shaking? All right. <laughs> no is good. Uh, is it limited to just Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and fiber connections? No, right? Uh, we have lots of different types of connections. Uh, for instance, if you look in this picture here, you'll see we have an inkjet printer hooked up to a desktop PC. What do you guys think that would be connected by? What do most people connect a printer by? Maybe Bluetooth. Old school, we use parallel. Nowadays, we use USB. Well, USB is considered a network. According to the Network Plus exam, I know you guys probably don't think of USB as a network, but they consider USB as a network because it's a serial bus, um, and it's actually using networking technology over serial. So uh, when you see a USB connection, they consider that a network. Okay? It's a personal area network, which is a very small network. Okay? Bluetooth would be the same thing. It's also a personal area network. It's a very short and small network. Um, here we have a laptop computer that's connecting wirelessly with a PDA or a, uh, a mobile phone. Um, that could be using something like infrared technology, right? That would also be a computer network, again, a personal area network, uh, or wireless networks, which could be a LAN or a personal area network. So we'll talk about those as we go through here as well. So what is the purpose of computer networks? Well, at their core, a network's purpose is to make connections between machines, just like Michelle had said, right? So our purpose there is to connect two machines together to do some sort of work, okay? Uh, we have a term in Network Plus that we talk about called a converged network. And what a converged network is, is where we transport multiple types of data at the same time over the same wire. And the most common here is when we start doing data, video, and voice. So if you guys think about your home networks, right, you could be sitting there watching video on YouTube, you could be talking on Skype with your friend across the world, right? And you could be on the internet checking your bank statements, all using the same connection, right? Your same TCP IP network connection um, through your network. And all converged networks are doing that. So in the old days, we used to have separate networks for separate things in businesses. So we'd have the data network that did all the data stuff. And we'd have a video network to watch our TVs on. And we'd have phone networks to make our phone calls on. Well, now we're doing this converged network where everything is going over TCP IP. It's all going over the same network. So our networks have had to become more reliable. Um, if you think about back when you guys were growing up, when you picked up the phone line, there was never a question the phone was going to work, right? You just expected it 100% of the time to work. Well, do you, you expect that with your computers the same way? Not necessarily, right? So with the computers, we never really expected them to be 100% on all the time. And so our networks were never built to that reliability standard. Nowadays that we're using phones over our networks, we have to get that reliability up. And so in networking, we talk about this thing called the five nines of availability, which is 99.999%. Um, that works out to about five minutes of downtime per year. That's a pretty high standard to maintain, right? And we'll talk about later how we're going to maintain that standard in a much later lecture. Um, but for now, just realize that because of this converged networking, it's pushed this requirement for the availability to go up. So uh, different types of network traffic, right? I'm sure you guys have all seen this before. Uh, we can do lots of things on our networks. We can do file sharing. We can do video chatting. We can surf the web. We can play on social media like Facebook and WordPress and Twitter. Uh, we can do streaming video with YouTube or Amazon Prime or Netflix. We can do instant messaging with our old AOL instant messengers. No, nobody uses that anymore, right? We all use Skype or something like that. Um, email, right? We can do web-based email or client-side email. And we also now have voice over IP. Uh, for instance, in this classroom, we have a voice over IP phone. I could pick that up and call my wife's cell phone, and it would work just fine, just like a regular telephone. It doesn't really matter to me as the end user whether it's a voice over IP phone or a traditional uh, plain old telephone service. All I care about is I can get a dial tone to make a phone call. Uh, but for you guys as network technicians, you've got to care that it's a VoIP phone because it's a lot more work for you. So network components. So what are the different uh, components we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about all the things on this network diagram. We're going to talk about the clients, the servers, the hubs, the switches, the routers, the media, and the WAN links. Um, we're going to go back later and talk about each of these in much greater detail. For instance, switches, we're going to spend an entire lecture just on switches. And we're going to spend an entire lecture just on routers, an entire lecture just on WAN link. 
but for right now we're just going to cover each one, kind of the, uh, the one slide uh, snippet, so at least you have it in your mind of what we're talking about as we go through. So the first one we have is a client, um, and a client is simply any end user device that accesses the network. That can be your workstation, your laptop, a tablet, a smartphone, uh, even your television now can become a client. Um, at my house, we just got one of those new um, Amazon Fire boxes, right? You hook it up to your network and then plug it into your TV, and now I can watch streaming media on my TV, right, direct from Amazon. Uh, we, had, we had a lot of different things before, but we just got the new Fire because it's cool. <laughs> we used to use the WD TV. Uh, we have that in our bedroom still. Um, some people use Roku boxes or Netflix boxes. Some DVD players or smart TVs have it built in automatically. Um, and all of these things become clients for us, right? Um, and any device that we connect to our network is going to be considered a client. Most of the time when you see it on a network diagram, you're going to see it dictated as a, as a desktop computer, just a traditional old school desktop computer but that can easily be substituted out with a laptop, a cell phone, or anything else you want to use. The next thing we're going to talk about is a server. Okay? And a server is a specialized device that provides resources for the rest of the network. Okay? Um, different types of servers do different functions. You can have an email server that gives you email. Uh, you can have a web server that serves up web pages. Uh, a file server serves up files, chat servers, print servers, all those types of things. Um, these can either be done as a dedicated hardware server, or it can be a software solution. Uh, or it can actually be a device that acts as a server for a particular function. Uh, for instance, in my house, I have a hard drive that hooks up to my network and acts as a file server, even though it's really just a hard drive with a little bit of special software thrown on. It's not as robust as a full dedicated file server would be, but it does the job for a four-person family, right? Now, if I was doing that here for the school where we have you know, 5,000 students, we would definitely want to have a dedicated file server to handle those functions. Oh, and usually a uh, server is going to be dictated kind of like an old-school tower box um, that you'll see on a network diagram like that. The next one we have is a hub. Um, and a hub is an older technology that if you're using your networks nowadays, you should probably be shot as a network technician because they're horrible. Um, but we still need to cover them because you'll still find them in networks, surprisingly enough. Um, and the other reason we cover hubs is because they kind of started out and we migrated to switches afterwards. So if you don't understand how a hub works, it makes it very difficult to understand how a switch works. So what hubs did was they allowed you to interconnect more ports um, together. So if I have three computers I need to hook together, each of those computers only has one network card. I can't hook them all together, so I would put a hub in between, and they would all hook to the hub, and that way they can all talk. Um, and the way we would do this is we can actually just use the devices. Usually hubs came in a 4-port, 8-port, 16-port, or greater variety, and that would give you the number of connections for you to plug into. Um, the thing about hubs, that, the reason why I say they suck so bad, is that they receive information in one port, and then they rebroadcast it out all the other ports. So in this case, I have a 6-port hub being shown, and I have three machines. If the machine in the top right up here starts talking and wants to talk to the one on the bottom left here, this guy can also listen to it because everything that comes in one port is going to go out all the other ports. Okay? So that becomes a security issue. Um, switches don't work that way. Switches are an upgraded version of a hub. Uh, the other thing that thinks about hubs is if you have a hub, I'm going to use a four port just for easy math. Let's say I'm running it at 100 megabits per second and I have four devices on it. Since they're sharing the bandwidth, we now only get 25 megabits per port, okay? Because they have to share the amount of resources. With a switch, that doesn't happen because it's all dedicated resources. And we'll talk about switches here, uh, actually, right now. So switches are an upgraded version of a hub. They can still connect network devices like clients and servers together, um, but they actually will learn which devices are on which switch ports. So when John wants to talk to Jennifer, he can go through me as the switch, and I'll remember that Jennifer's sitting in the front and John's sitting in the back. And so when he goes and says, hey, I want a message to go to Jennifer, I can give it just to Jennifer and Michelle doesn't get to see it, right? And so only one, the, the connection goes between those two people. That increases our security and it increases our bandwidth. And I can have multiple connections like this happening at one time. So I can have two students over here talking and two students over on the other side talking. They can't hear each other and they're all using the same thing at the same time. The way this works is switches forward the traffic received from one port to the other port based on what's their MAC address, which is their machine addressable code. Okay? Um, and we'll talk about MAC addresses later on as well. Uh, and this provides us more security and more bandwidth. So in most of your networks, you're going to be using switches for all your internal network connections. 
Next thing we're going to talk about is routers. Uh, routers are used to connect two different networks together. So switches, we were connecting two different machines together. With routers, we're connecting two different groups of machines or networks. So as you can see here, we have a switch network on the left side. We have a hub network on the right side. And if I want to connect these two networks, I have this router sitting right in the middle. And the way a net router works is it's going to forward the traffic based on its logical address. And the most common version of that is called IP addressing which is what you guys are probably familiar with, with IPv4 or IPv6. Um, and that's what we're going to be using uh, most in this class. We will talk about a couple of other older versions of uh, addressing standards, but you're not going to see them on a test because they're old and they've been taken off the version 6 exam because everyone uses IP addressing now. Next we have media. And what media is, is it is what is used to connect the two devices together. So when I hooked up that computer to the hub or that computer to a switch, or the switch to the router, I have to cable that together some way. And that cabling is what we refer to as media and networks. Okay? That can be a copper cable, like your uh, RJ45 cabling, like CAT5 or CAT6 cabling. It can be a fiber optic cable, like your LC type connectors or your SC type connectors. Uh, or it can be even radio frequency using radio waves, something like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. That is still considered media. The air, going through, the air that it's using is the media. Uh, each type of media has its own strengths and limitations, and we're going to talk about media in depth later. We have an entire module on it, uh, because we have to understand the bandwidth for each different type of media, the capacity that it has, the distance that can be covered, and the cost to install it and maintain it. For instance, if I want to run a cable a mile, can I use an RJ45 Cat5 cable? No, because it only can go a maximum of 100 meters. Those are the kind of things we have to understand uh, to be successful on the test. So we'll talk about those later. And then the last piece here is our wide area network connection, okay, or our WAN link. Um, and what this is used to do is connect two different networks together, and it's the physical link that will be going between these two networks. So uh, there's different WAN links available. We'll have an entire module uh, set aside for that. Uh, but things like lease lines, like T1 connections and T3 connections. We have DSL, which is digital subscriber line, uh, which is not as popular today as it was about 10 years ago. We have cable modems like your Comcast and Time Warner services. You have fiber optic like um, your, your Fios service from Verizon. Uh, you have satellite internet like HughesNet. You have cellular service like your mobile phone providers can provide you. Uh, you have microwave service that can go from building to building. And we'll talk about all these different types of wide area links later on. Um, and we can connect our internal network to an external network using these WAN links. For instance, if you have a small office at home, you want to be able to connect to the internet, you have to have a WAN link to do that. Um, all of us in our homes have some sort of internet connection, uh, whether that's cable modem or a fiber optic modem, uh, depending on if you're using Comcast or Verizon in this area. Uh, and those are both good examples of WAN links, and we'll talk more about those later. Uh, and that is the overview of our network devices.